So if you're a target, there's virtually nothing you can do. I can disrupt an individual from the level of their cell to their system and disrupt individuals on a variety of levels from individuals all the way up to the social fabric. Target a specific individual, change or eliminate that individual with very little attribution and trace and be able to leave prior to any attribution. Who here actually feels like they are under surveillance pretty regularly? Everyone occupies, no? Everyone inside of Occupy. How many people here have been arrested and had their, at their court date, they had their phone taken into the back room? How many people here had their retina scanned? Wow. If you're targeting demonstrators, you, you make them suicidally depressed. Uh, and they, they're not, they don't care about demonstrating anymore because they're too upset. With one pulse frequency, you can just make people so suicidal, they can't be bothered to act like a demonstrator anymore. All they want to do is sleep or lay in bed all day. There's an infrastructure in place in the United States and worldwide that NSA has built in cooperation with other governments as well that intercepts basically every digital communication, every radio communication, every analog communication that it has sensors in place to detect. If they can't get it through the internet, through the tapping of the lines or anything like that, through a commercial means, and they're unsure about you, they can get it by close access means, uh, coming in and actually bugging your house or bugging your, uh, or putting monitors in your system, in your house, or on your computer. They can use your computer video to look back at you, or they can monitor uh, within a certain distance the keystrokes you're making on your computer or what you're putting on your computer screen. And if that's not enough, they can come in through the firewall you think you have, but don't and go through your operating system that think you think protects you but doesn't and read your uh, encrypted email that you thought was secure but isn't. Or they can simply wait for you to do decrypts if you've done that, pull them off and use your unused CPU while you're on the computer to drain it. It's called active attack. We are in a new Cold War um, and this is why countries um, are developing this. I mean, really developing this. Uh, and this is why all of the microwave transmitters are going up everywhere. Uh, because somebody, if they wanted to, could use them for other effects. The system is up and running. MIT was uh, awarded a number of years ago to Woody Norris. Um, this is 2005 or 2006. And that award was a half a million dollars for doing what's called acoustic heterodyning. Being able to send a signal from two points into an individual so they literally hear a voice in their head that nobody around them hears. I mean, voices are the easiest ones mm -hmm. because all you have to do is stimulate, uh, stimulate the cochlea with a, a set resonant frequency. It's very easy. Uh, voices are very easy. Um, and the, it isn't people imagining voices, they physically hear them. You can physically make people hear voices, certain voices, and it can be any conversation, um, and it can be anybody you want to hear. It can be a soft, angelic voice, it can be a god, uh, it can be something that scares you like a devil, it, it can be anything. DARPA let a couple of contracts back in 2011, 2012, to the University of California for what's called electronic telepathy, being able to monitor the brain activity of human beings at a distance and determine what they're thinking. And then on a second contract, actually developing complex signals, being able to send them into the brain of another person, literally transmit a message. Um, this is where the technology is today. What we're here to talk about today is the fact that the brain is and will be the 21st century battlescape in many ways. End of story. You will encounter some form of neurocognitive science that has been weaponized not only in your military career, but in your personal and professional lives. It is valid, valuable, and already an operational play. The brain is the current and future battle space. What's new about this is the in-close nature of this. Increasingly, we're not seeing these things as weapons of mass destruction against gross aspects of the population. 
more specifically perhaps, might be targeting individuals on a level that allows either direct attribution or covert engagement with non-attribution. Formal definition of a weapon, probably the one that you've heard about most recently, most contemporaneously in, in the literature, is the possibility to use some form of directed energy to affect physiology peripherally and also to affect the physiology and health of the brain. Case in point here, U.S. Embassy personnel in Havana and possibly in China. Clearly, one of the things we can also do is transcranial neuromodulation, the idea of going through the skull to modulate the node and network activity of the brain, to implant certain brain-machine interfaces. These are many of the DARPA programs that you may hear of now, probably the one that is most notorious. is something called the N3 program, which is the Non-Invasive Neurosurgical Neuromodulation Program, being run by their program manager, Dr. Al Mundi. The idea here is to put minimal-sized electrodes in a network within a brain through only minimal intervention to be able to read and write into the brain function in real time, remotely. And by affecting the way that brain is built and the way it functions, influence in ways that are kinetic and non-kinetic. The attitudes, beliefs, thoughts, emotions, activities. Look at the power that understanding tools and techniques of the brain sciences afford. If you want to cause a specific psychiatric illness <clears throat> you would have an infrared device that followed the person and you would link it to a, a pencil thin microwave source so the microwave beam would always target a specific gland or a specific part of the brain or an eye or a heart uh, so you, you would have them being targeted so if you're a target, there's virtually nothing you can do. And if they fail in their electronic weans, they can always send the FDI, FBI at you to do a sneak and peek and take your photograph or do whatever they want. As they have done with us, by the way. Um, so you guys are actually, in a sense, the canaries in the coal mine, right? Because the incentives are all lined up against you. Anybody see on the subway, link your Metro card to your debit card, right? And like auto refill? This is a concept which is key to everything we'll talk about today, and it's called linkability. Take one piece of data and link it to another piece of data. So for example, if you have your Metro card and you have your debit card, you have those things and you can draw a line between them, right? So that's like not a scary thing, except your bank card is tied to everything else that you do during the day. So now they know where you're going when you make purchases. So when they decide to target you, they can actually recreate your exact steps with a Metro card and with the credit card alone like literally where you go and what you buy, and potentially by linking that data with other people on similar travel plans, they can figure out who you talked to and who you met with. When you then take cell phone data, which logs your location, and you link up purchasing data, Metro card data, and your debit card, you start to get what you could call metadata in aggregate over a person's life. And metadata in aggregate is content. It tells a story about you, which is made up of facts but is not necessarily true. So for example, just because you were on the corner and all those data points point to it, it doesn't mean you committed the crime. So it's important to note that if someone has a perception of you having done a thing, it will now follow you for the rest of your life. So just keep in mind that what happens to you guys, for example, with fingerprints and retinal scans and photographs, that is what is going to happen to people in the future when they resist policy changes and when they try to protest in a totally constitutionally protected way. Intelligence communities or agencies of the, of the world are gaining too much influence over government, uh, how governments operate. Uh, and this is moving really to a, uh, to a Stasi state, basically. And it's not just the United States, it's countries all around the world. You have to be uh, aware that, that these agencies are, uh, are threatening what is fundamental to human rights everywhere. And you've got to ensure that you have some way of verifying and keeping these uh, agencies in line. And whatever it takes in law and whatever it takes technically to make that happen, these uh, governments around the world, all of them need to do. I mean, in fact, I don't think there's anything you could do to stop it. They're after you, they're going to get you one way or the other. And then, of course, you also have the things that are a little bit more traditional. If we talk about things that can be operable in the biochemical space, we ordinarily talk about drugs, bugs, toxins, and ever more, we're considering devices. With these capabilities, basically, the, the vast majority of human 
and uh, computer-to-computer communications, device-based communications, which sort of inform the relationships between humans, um, are automatically ingested without targeting. And that allows individuals to retroactively search your communications based on self-certifications. So, for example, if I wanted to see the content of your email or, you know, your wife's phone calls or anything like that, um, all I have to do is use what's called a selector, um, any kind of thing in the communications chain that might uniquely or almost uniquely identify you as an individual. And I'm talking about things like email addresses, IP addresses, phone numbers, credit cards, um, even passwords that are unique to you that aren't used by anyone else. Um, I can input those into the system and it will not only go back through the database and go, have I seen this anywhere in the past? It will um, basically put an additional level of scrutiny on it moving into the future that says, if this is detected now or at any time in the future, I want this to go to me immediately and alert me in real time that you're communicating with someone, things like that. If they want to experiment on you, by the thousands, they will. Uh, and you can be driven to insanity and death uh, and you just become a tick in a box without any so much as a, a feeling. Yeah, and this is what they do and this is why they are above the law. One of the experiments was to take an ordinary sane person, cause insanity and have a, a psychiatrist who was unknown to everybody diagnose schizophrenia or paranoia or a psychiatric illness. That was a successful outcome. And the, the person would spend the rest of their life in an asylum, in misery, but to the government scientist, that was a success. We also see the use of biodata as a viable weapon manipulating biodata so that I can then put into your particular medical records subtle information that may change the disposition of whether you're sick or not, change how you're treated, influence the postures that go to you in terms of insurance, care, viability for military service. By altering that information, by changing those data, by purloining those data, I essentially change the you of you. And I can do that in very subtle and insidious ways. Furthermore, I can do that on a variety of different levels that can affect key individuals, so that in fact your medical record changes to thereby render you incapable or at least invalid to be able to serve in a way you're serving. Or I can do that on a much larger scale, groups, populations. And if I change those data, I change the way you're being regarded and treated. And I can do that in one of two ways. I can do it in such a way that you're going to be regarded in a negative sense, or I can do it in such a way that I'm going to treat you incorrectly. If I say, for example, you have a particular allergy or you have a particular disorder, you will be treated for that. And that could then harm your health and your stability in both a short wars approach as well as a long wars approach. Low level microwaves were causing a, an enormous amount of cancers and leukemias and ill effects. <clears throat> and by then, it, everybody was leaping onto the microwaves as stealth weapons and they go from there, which was the 50s, uh, right up to and including the present day. I guess my, uh, <clears throat> my frustration is why I couldn't get through to government, uh, members of government in the House, Senate or in the, or in the judiciary or, or in the administration or in the uh, inspector general's office or anywhere to actually start, start to realize what they were doing is stand up and say something against it openly. Um, that was kind of the very frustrating part because you thought these people who took the same oath of office that I did would, would actually do that. And they, you also thought that they would value the principles uh, in, the, in the Constitution and what they stood for in terms of human rights and human freedom. Um, but they don't apparently uh, care for that. I mean, it's more, more it becomes an, is, uh, an issue of money, control, and power. And it's not a question of human rights anymore. Um. So, for the last <clears throat> 40 years, the government, the English government, has been lying to the people. 
And the American government, the Canadian, the Australian, they have been lying. Uh, they have been lying to protect industry, protect their profits, to protect themselves from lawsuits. I believe that this industry and the part of the government which is encouraging them will be responsible for more civilian deaths and suffering than all the terrorist groups in the world ever. With the growth of the industry over the last 15 years, I would say now that these people are probably going to cause more death and suffering than the entire Second World War. And is that genocide? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt. And are they going to get away with it? Yes, because they are untouchable. They are outside the law. Scientists at the end of the war were hanged for what scientists today are doing and getting away with. Absolutely, yep. Our government could not just have a general writ like the FISA court ordered with the Verizon uh, transfer of data on 110 million plus US citizens without being named or given probable cause or anything else. That was a general writ by, written by our FISA court that should be called into court by themselves and individually explain why they did that and why, what was the reason for it and their justification to do it. They need their day in court instead of doing everything in secret. They never come out and tell anybody what they're really doing or what their real understanding or secret, secret interpretation is. That's because they're too afraid. They're, they're cowards. They're hiding behind uh, uh, a secret interpretation uh, applied with a secret court in secret by a secret government. Sanctioned by the World Health Organization without a shadow of it. It is the same people. Um, it's the same people sit on the ICNAP certificate. They sit on our government's health protection agency, sit on the World Health Organization. Uh, it's the same people. It's the same people. There's probably no more than 20 of them. <clears throat> But they, yes, they are going to, in my opinion, commit the worst genocide this planet has ever known. Not just people, but animals, plants. They are probably going to cause more destruction uh, than a global war. And in several hundred years time, uh, people will look back, whoever survives, and look at what we try to do to stop them. It's time to act, to claim that birthright and begin to express ourselves uh, in that way. And that's not out of anger and fear. It's out of concern, empathy, love, and compassion for the people on this planet that we care about and those that we don't even know yet. The fact is change is what's required and not an external driven change, but an internally recognized need to change. I'm, I'm really more disappointed in the American public that they aren't more uh, irritated. I mean, they're starting to get there, but it's taking a long time. They, they, they aren't, I guess not too many remember history or not too many uh, think of history. Well, I can understand the fact that we haven't had a, a totalitarian ruler here since uh, George III, so about 240 years. Whereas the Germans, you know, the Germans are really sensitive to this stuff. Why? Because they've got living memory of people who used to live under the Stasi or people who used to live under, still some of them, under the Gestapo and the SS. They know per firsthand what a totalitarian state is like to live under. Dr. John Hall. As I understand the memorandum from the president, it's for you to determine if current legislation is adequate in uh, protecting individuals and if there's any ongoing experimentation. Uh, in reviewing the common rule, uh, it's very obvious that there's a lot of loopholes to inform consent. All of the horrific experiments you've mentioned, uh, Willowbrook, MKUltra, radiation experiments, mostly were done without informed consent. Uh, they were funded by the DOD and intelligence agencies, where I'm not even so sure you would know if there's an IRB, much less if an IRB is looking at informed consent. Um, as a physician, um, relative to some of what you're hearing today um, in the community, we are seeing an alarming rate of complaints of use of electromagnetic weapons. Uh, microwave auditory effects, silent sound spectrum, EEG cloning, which has taken the lab out of the laboratory and into the home. Most of these, from the research that we reviewed, can be done remotely. 
Uh, it seems to be more weapons research than medical research. Um, I personally corresponded with upwards of 1,500 victims, all complaining of identical complaints from every state in the nation um, of being exposed to electromagnetic radiation, um, non-ionizing radiation for the use of cognitive control or behavior control. Um, I've submitted a uh, paper to you, and there's a, another paper submitted to each member from another physician in Kansas City um, alluding to the same thing. Thank you. Ms. Catherine Nestor. My name is Catherine Nestor, and I'm from Pennsylvania. This commission has spoken of a long history of abuse of the human research subject. Although no one mentioned MKUltra today, President Clinton recently apologized for this. My young child and I have been used as non-consensual test subjects. We have been subjected to COINTEL Pro-like stalking, remote neural monitoring, and electromagnetic torture, resulting in psychological and physical damage. And I won't go into the details of that because I have four pages written in here that is very similar to Connie's testimony. Please do not wait 70 years to investigate this. I ask Dr. Amy Gutman to begin today. There is new work for the Commission for Human Subject Protection on our shores. And please give us a dramatic response, Susan, and please give us a congressional hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Marshall. Good afternoon. My name is Connie Marshall. I'm a former mayoral candidate from Louisville, Kentucky. I have never been involved in any criminal activity. I am an eight-year victim survivor of assaults by directed energy weapons. The torture I've experienced consists of body overheating, body extremely cold, seizures, heart pain, ear aches, itching behind eyes, burning behind eyes, swelling, headaches, involuntary movement of my limbs, exhaustion, speeding and heart racing, hair coming out by the handfuls as if I've had chemotherapy, mind paralysis, being hypnotized or placed in a trance-type state, being tracked by a drone or satellite, controlled dreams, sleep deprivation, V2K, which is voice to skull, projected sound, extreme muscle spasms, and extreme muscle cramps, being made to fall down, blue circles around the pupils of my eyes, and I'm here and you can look at them if you like, low frequency noises in my home, high frequency noises in my home, sexual stimulation, numerous electrical appliances in my home are destroyed, four computers, two fax machines, seven telephones. I am watched in my home 24 hours a day and followed around everywhere I go though I do not have a criminal history.